Welcome back, it's Dr. Somji. Today we're going to be talking about a trend that's been viral on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere. Even on my own page on TikTok, um, there's a lot of debates about it. It's about using rosemary oil for hair growth. I'm going to tell you whether it works, if it does work, how it works, and whether it's more effective than other things on the market at the moment. So stay tuned. So as you can see from this video from my TikTok, it's all about rosemary oil and its benefits. Now look, there is actual evidence that we're going to go through to show that actually rosemary oil can work. But generally, as an active ingredient, it does a number of things. It reduces inflammation, it promotes nerve endings, so it helps repair certain areas, helps with circulation, it also is an antifungal medi uh, medication and it also has been proven to block something called DHT. So what is DHT? DHT is dihydrotestosterone. This is the product that both males and females produce and is a breakdown product of testosterone that actually is present in individuals that have male and female pattern balding. So for example, myself, I'm someone that suffers from male pattern hair loss. By the time I was like 20, I'd probably lost up to here. Half of this is a transplant and half of this me just holding on to the hairs because I have bad genes for hair loss. In fact, that was a lot of comments on my posts, always about hair loss is why should I listen to Dr. Sondry because he's losing hair? Well, that's the reason why you should listen to me because if I haven't been doing what I've been doing, then I probably wouldn't have any hair right now. If you've got the genes for hair loss, you need to remember that your curve in terms of losing your hair is going to be like this. When you're doing treatments for hair loss, you can at best do this, which is plateau. And that's where hair transplants come in to get more hair. But as a minute that you stop these therapies, yes, your genetics will take over. So people always say to me, I've been using minoxidil, Regain, and as soon as you stop using it, you'll lose all your hair. I mean, that is kind of obvious because you are, you are suppressing your genetics. So if you want to keep hold of your hair, you need to keep doing something. It's like saying, the moment I stop exercise, I'm going to get a heart attack. Are you going to stop it? If you've, got, if you've got heart disease in the family, of course you're not going to stop it. So same things with your hair. If you can do something small every day that will help your hair, then do it. Now, with rosemary oil, there's a few studies that have shown that it can actually be as effective as something like minoxidil because it pretty much does a similar thing. So minoxidil opens up blood vessels. Because it opens up blood vessels, it allows those follicles to get more of a blood supply. And then you can get a reversal of what we call the miniaturizing process, which is present in both male and female pattern hair loss. A study looked at 2% minoxidil versus rosemary oil and then followed those patients up over even more than three months. And the people that were having, well, in the study, didn't know whether they were using rosemary oil or using minoxidil. So there was no bias within there. What that study basically showed at uh, more than three months was that there was no statistical difference between using minoxidil or rosemary oil. So it was actually a lot, it was basically the same. And also crucially, the number of patients that were using rosemary oil didn't have the sensitivity that you get with minoxidil. And I get that sensitivity with Regain. Uh, after about four or five weeks of continuous use, I get kind of itchiness and dryness of the scalp. And it's something that a lot of patients suffer from. Normally you just stop using it and then you reintroduce it. But this is where rosemary oil comes in. So it's an adequate substitute for something like minoxidil. Now, what are the limitations of the study that we just talked about? Well, A, there weren't that many patients involved. So there was only like 30 to 40 patients each side, which is not a high number, but it's still that the results were statistically significant. So we shouldn't really discount them. But one of the major drawbacks of that study is that it compared 2% minoxidil um, to rosemary oil. Now, in, in clinic, I prescribe more than 5% minoxidil because there's a certain types of patients with the genetics that they will actually respond to higher strength minoxidil. So sometimes we might actually prescribe 10%, so five times that amount. So 
If you're already using high strength minoxidil, so greater than five percent, greater than two percent, and you're seeing good results, I'd probably stay with that. If you're getting irritation with it every now and again, then you can swap it out with rosemary oil. So instead of using the minoxidil, you can use rosemary oil so that you don't lose the effects that you've got and the momentum that you've got. But um, would I say it's better than Regain? Probably not in terms of actual effectiveness because there's a lot more studies on regain than there is rosemary oil but it's clear that rosemary oil does work for both male and female pattern hair loss so we really shouldn't discount it what about other types of hair loss so we've got something called alopecia areata which presents as almost like disc like or even like spot like areas where you've lost hair and you will see nothing on the scalp it's an inflammatory condition where your body attacks its own follicles and it can be induced by even physical or even mental stress and it tends to be inherited. So there needs tends to be a genetic component. Normally we treat this with topical steroids or intralesional steroids or injections of steroids within the area. And there was a study as far back as 1998 that compared um, doing nothing for alopecia areata to individuals that put rosemary oil. And rosemary oil, there was a 44% improvement. 40% of patients improved and 15% without treatment. So there definitely is something in their decreased inflammatory response that rosemary oil has that it really just just almost resets the scalp so that you can grow more hair within that area. There's no current clinical evidence talking about mixing it with other treatments. So if you're mixing rosemary oil with minoxidil, it might be a recipe for disaster and I wouldn't say it's so safe. But to get started with rosemary oil, you can get started with rosemary oil shampoos. There's some great oils out there, like the one that we talked about on our other social media channels. And you can apply this once or twice daily, depending on your um, level of hair loss that you have. So, you know, in summary, rosemary oil is really effective as a natural alternative for hair loss. If you've got a sensitivity to minoxidil, then you can use rosemary oil instead. But I would always keep going back to minoxidil because that's what I do. And whenever I get sensitivity or I'm on a break from minoxidil for a period of time, I'll use the rosemary oil. So it just helps maintain the results that I have. So extremely promising. All those before and afters on TikTok and stuff are probably true because it does help in a number of different areas for different types of hair loss. And I think if you're looking to start including it within your regime, start with a rosemary oil shampoo. It's a very good start. And then if you have time to massage like serums and things onto the scalp, absolutely fine. I don't recommend making your own rosemary oil at home because it can lead to a lot of irritation. I see a lot of patients coming in that have made it at home and they don't know what the concentration is, they don't know about the stability, and then suddenly you get scalp irritation and everything goes back to square one. So stick to actual proper cosmeceuticals or the things that are made in a lab that are stable and tested to last beyond, the, well, at, up, at least up until your expiry date. So if you have any questions about rosemary oil, how to use it, any different studies that you want me to interpret, or any types of hair loss that you might think rosemary oil might help, just let us know um, in the comments below. But I definitely am a fan of rosemary oil, and I think that you're gonna see more products in the future um, with rosemary oil as the hero ingredient. So don't forget to click the link to subscribe. Also click the bell just to make sure that you're informed of all the new videos that we've released. So you'll be the first to catch them. Thank you so much.